All right, let's do a use case. In, in September of 2015, a vendor reached out to us and said, hey, we have this client who's been using this, this IIoT platform, okay? It's been using this IIoT platform. It's our platform. They've spent millions of dollars and it's not going well. They, and but, but what it really boiled down to is the time to value takes too long. You know, that is each use case that they're doing, it's taking too long. There are too many gaps in the data. So there's too many, there's too much data around the organization that they want to acquire that they can't. Um, and there's no mechanism to take what we've learned in this location, this site in this area and have it apply to process improvement of the same area, but in a different site. So the, this engagement started with me and another architect. We flew out to their location and we met with their board of directors and their newly hired director of digital transformation. He wanted to, to stay the course, but improve the architecture and the methodology used to develop their solutions. So this is a large organization. I think about 10,000 to 15,000 employees. There were uh, five sites we were working in, in three countries. Okay. So three countries, um, about a thousand users were going to be using this digital solution. And it was going to apply to about 500 assets, about a hundred assets per site give or take. They had already spent millions of dollars. They had only integrated the solution to one area in one site. And they had spent years, three years or something. Their first mistake was they, when they were ready, they wanted to focus on MES initially. What they wanted to do was they wanted to, they wanted to know where they were to plan. They wanted to know how efficient their operations were, and they wanted to get much better at recipe management in all of their recipes. One of the unique challenges this organization had was that they made lots of custom products. So they had something like 30,000 SKUs in the ERP, and they would make 100 new SKUs every day. So a unique thing was we would have to be able to consume a new new SKU. We'd have to check for new SKUs at some set interval in this MES layer, and we would have to download the bill of materials and do all of our material definition and management. But because they created so many new products, that was a unique thing about their solution. The other thing is, is they had very differing processes. So they made, um, I can't reveal the, the industry. So I, it was additive manufacturing. So that is, as you went from one area to the next, you were taking the thing from one area and adding to it before you got to the finished good. So when we when we interview when we met with the C suite with the we asked them what they wanted and they basically said we want manufacturing execution system with the core 4, right? So OEE downtime tracking, work order management, scheduling. They wanted material management, they wanted quality management, they wanted recipe management and validation, they wanted statistical process control, they wanted historical analysis, and they wanted a single source of truth. They didn't say unified namespace, but they said they wanted a single source of truth for all data in their organization. They it needed to be integrated to the ERP system and it needed to be integrated to their lab. So the lab couldn't the labs in their or in their sites could no longer be separate from operations. One of the questions I asked the executive executive leadership was based on this, your satisfaction level with the current solution that this, the other integrator has built, how likely are that you want, how likely are, is it that you want to just kill this project and start over from scratch? And they all said 80%. So 80, they were eight out of 80% of the way there to just scrapping it. And that was every executive, five of them. So the, me and the other architects said, listen, this is what we'd like to do. If you're willing to allocate $50,000 to a proof of concept in this location here in the United States, there were two locations in the States that we were working with. If you're willing to allocate $50,000 to a proof of concept, then we, what we're going to ask you to do is you, we want a process that you've tried to integrate that failed. Okay. So, and it was an extrusion molding, molding machine that had a custom embedded controller. You need to give us 12 weeks let us integrate this extrusion molding area. And so they said, okay, we said, we'll do it our way. One of the unique things about the extrusion molding line was they used an inline tester, a vision system that tested the parts, the molded parts that came out, but that tester could be moved from molder to molder. So if you've ever done MES systems, it's a nightmare when end of line testing is mobile, right? So that's a, that's a unique thing where a cell within the production line could be moved between many production lines. Okay. It's a, it's a hard hurdle to jump. The other big hurdle we were going to have to jump is this, they're, con they're making a hundred new parts every day. They're defining a hundred new products new SKUs every single day. So we did that proof of concept for 12 weeks. They spent about $50,000 and we blew them away. One of the big hurdles that we had to do was how do we handle the mobile inline tester? We decided not to do it through Mac ID. Basically, we looked at the routing table. We could tell which switch it was plugged into. And then we figured out which 
which production line that cell was on based on which switch it was plugged into. There, another way to do that would have been to look at the Mac ID, wh which Mac ID is in which routing table on which switch. We could have done that as well. But what we did was we looked at the um, we looked at the IP address, which was static on that machine. After that, they decided, hey, let's. So we did that from September of 15 to December of 2015, and then we did a. Uh, we drew up a big engagement in which was they were basically going to buy 200 hours of engineering every month, you know, for a year. So we spent 13 months. We did 14 iterations. We did 4,200 man hours. So basically two, two man years or two man years. They spent a half a million dollars. We integrated in three different countries. Okay. And in five locations, 500 total assets for a thousand users. So from also a really important point is when we got about six months in. So in from February 2016 to September 2016, we were doing the core capabilities, MES with core four, material management, quality management, recipe management, SPC, historical analysis, UNS, ERP integration, and lab integration. We were building all those feature sets. In September is when we started to scale. We went to our second location. We went to our third location. We also needed to find an integrator who was close to their corporate headquarters who would be able to support them boots on the ground. Somebody who, an integrator who was within an hour's drive of their corporate headquarters. Because obviously we were in Dallas and we were, you know, it, the fastest we could get there would see be like say eight to 10 hours we managed a flight or whatever. So we needed an integrator who could be boots on the ground. We found an integrator and I, I, I found a guy there. I interviewed him. I interviewed the owner of the company and said, Hey, listen, I'd like to train you guys to be able to support this client. We want to be able to hand this client off to you in April of next year. Our plan is to only support them for one year and then we'll just be the architect. So starting in September of 2016, about six months before we were ready to do the handoff, we started training this other integrator. That included having that integrator subcontract under us while we did another client's integration so that they could learn our methodology. It was all sort of the baseline for where mastermind and mentorship came from. How do we, we're, we're teaching them how we do these integrations. And, and then from February of 16 to February of 2017, we just basically iterated. Okay. And, and so there were 14 iterations. That's 14 phases of deploying this globally. And then we hand it off to the other integrator in April of 2017, one year after we, or about 14 months after we engaged with the client. And then in April of 2018, we did a case study. If you if you look at the things that we did from October of 2015 to December of 2015, we did engagement and we did the molding proof of concept. That's where we designed the architecture, helped them with their digital strategy, and we saved the project. From February of 2016 to September of 2016, we codified the strategy, we finalized the architecture, we did the site one use cases, we did site one integration. So that was three areas in site one, which is their corporate headquarters. We did site two, three, and four data collections. So we connected all the equipment in sites two, three, and four and started and, and built out the unified namespace of those sites. We did capabilities design, specifically SPC. We had to jump that hurdle. We had to jump the hurdle of consuming new uh, SKUs from the ERP system. And then we did our SPC testing and ERP integration from February 16 to 2000. September 2016. The second big phase was doing site three PLC upgrades, site two area one integration and MES integration from about August of 2016 to November of 2016. And that was in China. Then from September of 2016 to December of 2016, we were doing site two area two and site four integration and partner training. Site two was located in um, Central America. And then from December of 2016 to April of 2017, we did continuous integration, continuous development. We supported them. We did the training of the integrator and then we did the handoff in April of 2017. Now, let me say this. A year later, there was a big case study done and a you know, documentary film done on the whole deal and everything. Let, let me, I want to go back and read the actual metrics here again and, and, and kind of point out why is it we never lose to another integrator. There are big integrators out there who bid against bid projects against us and never win. And the reason why is the, um, um, and there's no, there are very few integrators. If you're using the industry 3.0 model that you can do this for the price that we were able to do it for. So we did 13 months of work, two man years, 14 iterations, 4,200 man hours. They spent a half million dollars, $500,000 for work in three countries in five locations, five different plants, 500 total assets, thousand users. They spent $500,000. And prior to that, they'd spent almost 3 million. To this day, they've just continued to iterate and scale, continue to iterate, iterate and scale.